Food and weight obsession can be exhausting. Losing weight, gaining weight, dieting, feeling like a failure because you missed a workout, binged, overate, or gained all the weight back. The cycle is endless and it can be maddening, but I'm here to say you can stop the mental madness. You can take back control of your food behaviors, but you have to face your fears, you have to ask for help, and make a change. I am Leslie M. Thornton, permanent weight loss coach from hpwl.co. This is Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss, and I know you can make this happen. On this podcast, you will hear how to stop the mental madness, love your body, trust your food decisions, so you can create a life of happiness, freedom, and inner peace. Hello, everyone. Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. We are here today with Thomas Suski, the mind guy. Thank you, Thomas, for being here. So excited to introduce you uh, to Thomas today. So Thomas and I met last summer at a NLP trainer's training. Um, and that was a pretty cool time. And for those of you who have been following my story for a little while, you know, that hypnosis obviously changed my life. And while looking to get certified in hypnosis, I found out that, uh, neurolinguistic program actually came hand in hand with it many times. Um, so I got introduced into the whole world of how we really create everything that happens in our realities based on what's going in the, on in the mind and how we can use tools to get outcomes that we actually want to get in life towards excellence in any and every area of our life. And Thomas is someone who I highly respect when it comes to this work. Um, I feel like he is like an engineer of the work almost, um, that he just really fully understands it and um, really cares about practicing it with a really high level of integrity um, and uses it himself in his own life to produce results as well. So thank you again, Thomas, for being here. Appreciate your willingness to grace us with your presence and share your story today. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks for having me on here to talk about something I care deeply about and I'm passionate about. And um, yeah, it was a great two and a half weeks spending together in the summer in the hot <laughs> weather of uh of Las Vegas area. Um but uh yeah it was like a hundred really... and six degrees, I think, on certain days, like a hundred and eight or a hundred and nine. <laughs> Do you remember? It's like we walked out of our hotel and I was like, oven. <laughs> it was very interesting. I know. I take my dog Brody out for a walk at 10 p.m. pitch black, but you're you can feel the heat coming off of the pavement. That's how hot it was throughout the day. So it was a fun, fun memory, <laughs> but it was a great experience. And um, I'm really glad that I got to to meet you and that we're still friends and connected. And, and I do um, some work with you too, as well. So for HBWL, so yeah, enjoy, enjoy that as well. Has, yeah. Thomas has been um, helping get people enrolled uh, into the hypnosis for permanent weight loss program. Again, with such a high level of integrity, he cares about people more than anyone else. And you've changed a lot of lives so far. How many people I feel like there's like eight or nine or 10, or I don't even know. How yeah. Many something it like that. Yeah. But yeah. I think, deal. I think your program is incredible. So, um, it's very easy for me to have conversations with people to enroll them into the program because you created something one of a kind. There's nothing else quite like they're out there. Like your, your hypnosis for permanent weight loss program. I think it's, it's extraordinary. So, uh, it's very easy for me to have conversations around it. So, um, Great job. I don't know. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it helps so much to have someone who is as well versed in the work, right? Neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis like you are, you know, versus just anyone who is taking the calls. It's like you really deeply get <laughs> what's possible for a human being who gets into it. So let's get into it together today. So would love to hear how did you come across hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, and how did it impact your life? Oh, gosh. Yes, my story. Um, well, I can tell you that I really struggled for a very long time, especially in my 20s. Um, when I was 29, I hit bottom. I had a drinking problem. Um, I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, 
60 pounds heavier than this. And yeah, I couldn't control my drinking and I was depressed. I was miserable. I hated myself. Um, and when I hit bottom, I hit this crossroads and I, I made this choice that I really wanted to change and become an expert at life. And it's amazing when you make a powerful decision like that, your unconscious mind automatically starts uh, operating in that fashion. And, and I shifted timelines is what I like to say. So uh, I ended up on a completely different path. And the first thing that came along my path was hypnosis, right? So um, I met, I had a friend uh, uh, that I used to smoke cigarettes with at a bar and I, I would meet him every Saturday and be like, hey, let's go out back. And he'd be like, and there's one time where he's like, no, I quit. And I was like, I laughed because I thought he was joking, but he was serious. And then the next time I saw him, the same thing happened. And I was like, oh, this is legit. And I asked him about it. And he's like, oh, I did hypnosis out of some guy's living room in a local town. And um, and that was my first experience of hypnosis. And I quit smoking uh, just like that. And then when I was ready to quit drinking, I really had to prepare myself. I went back to the same guy and I, I quit drinking and I haven't had a drop of alcohol in nine years. So that was like my first taste of hypnosis. Um, but I had a whole new set of problems. I had severe social anxiety and still dealing with depression. And um, I still didn't have control over this. Right. Um, and <clears throat> uh, six years after hitting bottom, I ended up in a personal development seminar in Boston because I'm from Massachusetts. And it sparked this this road trip, this this complete complete change of events. So I used to be a structural engineer living in Western Massachusetts, and this seminar saw that I was really unhappy there, right, in that situation. And I ended up making a huge change. I rescued a dog. I sold most of my stuff. I quit my job. I bought a van. Yep, I'm one of those people that bought the van and traveled the country. <laughs> and um, and I, I I thought I was going to end up in Los Angeles, but LA was too much for me and I had no idea what I was going to do next. And while I was on the Pacific coast highway, I had an idea to see a hypnotist in Seattle. I have no idea where the thought came from, but I was still dealing with this social anxiety. And I was like, what else can this hypnosis do? And I met someone in Seattle, a few days I was there, had an amazing session. Um, Talk, talked with her for like an hour after my session. She gave me all this information. She's like, if you ever want to do this, this is the school you need to go to. Um, I never wanted to be a hypnotherapist. <laughs> it was never in a million years on my radar, right? Uh, most of the hypnotists I've ever met are quite eccentric. And uh, um, I always labeled hypnotists as, as kind of eccentric, kind of a little strange, a little weird. And um, so I continued on my road trip. I was in South, the, South Dakota and I'd been traveling for a month in the summertime. It was not souped up. I was sleeping on a sleeping bag on the, on the, the bed of my van. And I was like, I need to find a place to hunker down. So then I was in Denver, spent five weeks here. I reached out to the school that, um, that hypnotist in Seattle went to and, I wasn't going to go, but I had nothing to do after my five weeks. And the school started two days after my sublet ended and I took it as a sign. And then I went to the hypnotherapy Academy in New Mexico and it was life changing because I finally, for the first time learned how the subconscious mind works. And I was like, that's what runs the show. Right? So I've been trying, I was trying to use willpower and willpower and never getting where I wanted to go. And then I realized that there's this deeper component that does all the work. And if you knew how to access the subconscious mind, then you can make all the changes you could ever imagine. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened. I did about 20 plus sessions while I was there. Um, I learned what drives our human machinery. And then I, I moved to Denver and I started my practice. Um, and that was kind of like the start of it. Um, but then I just want to I pause for a second. Up, yeah, I, was, I can just keep talking. Because, so go. <laughs> no, no, it's so good. And you're like recreating for me, you know, just my experience of, you know, being totally obsessed with food, having it be the plague, you know, that I thought I was going to have to deal with for the rest of my life, you know, being a nurse and nursing school and all the science based things. And then just, okay, I'll try this hypnosis thing. 
and having it be like that. There's nothing like that feeling of waking up the next day and then realizing that you've entered into this entirely different reality of just like, what? like, you know, I get asked this all the time of like, oh, being in trance, as we all do as hypnotherapists, right? And all these different things. It's like, like, it is that surreal. And at the same time, you're still you, but it's like your body can't unlearn that feeling that you get and that mental freedom that you have that you can't quite put your finger on. And then same as you, it's just like that fascination. Like I was in San Francisco at the time. And it was just like, if my mind can do that in one night, like if I can get free from this food prison that I've been in my entire life in one night, like what else can I do? So then I'm just like playing like it's a virtual reality game that whole rest of the day of being like, so I'm going for a run on the San Francisco steep hills. And like being like, oh, I feel like I'm going to stop because it's really hard. And I was like, what's, who's the voice saying you're going to stop? What's hard? Does my body actually physically need to stop? Or is it just my mind saying it's hard because I feel some pain? Like, and then I ran the farthest I had ever run before because it was just like, by like putting different thoughts in my brain, I can get completely different outcomes. And then Yep. Just being like hungry for more and more and more. And that's my experience. Like, that's why we have the program after we have the hypnosis program. Cause once people get into this and realize what's possible, it's like, what else can we do here? And it's like, exactly. <laughs> what else can we do? So just sharing in that it's just for anyone who hasn't experienced that it's like, ooh, like, I don't even know what there's no words for it. It's life changing. That's for damn sure. But just to get present to what life is outside of your typical daily stressors is yeah unreal so thank you for sharing that okay we were just about at the climax of your story you said and then and then what happened (laughs) well you just actually made me think of something else that i wanted to share is that when i was at the hypnotherapy academy my experience was like i was in some type of like mystic school you know how they used to have these mystic schools back in the day I i think they still have them but it was like only a very special or a very small few people got to experience this. And it was like the secrets of the universe, right? Like that was my experience. I was like, like my mind was just blown day after day. And I was like, why didn't like, why isn't this taught in schools? Like, why don't more people know about this? Like all of that, like, like I felt so privileged and blessed to have this information. Um, And now that's kind of like, that's kind of gone away. It's just like, now it's just my my reality is that I, I know these things and I know what drives behavior and and how human beings operate. And that's just my life. But I can tell you that experience of like, it felt, I felt so privileged to have this information and, and I made it my mission to share it with the world. So more people know. And I, I truly believe it's this, it's specifically designed that we live in a place where information is hidden from us and knowledge is power. And this information is so powerful. This knowledge is so powerful that I want everybody to have it. Woo! Yeah. 100%. Yep. And that was the same thing for me. It's like, if I know this, like I can't not share it. Like this is the keys to the cast. Like you can be this free, you know? And it's just like, and you know, cause we're on conversations with people. It's like, you can't describe <laughs> you know, like exact to someone who's never experienced this work before, but it's just like, you got to get yourself in here. <laughs> like It's going to change your life forever. And like uh, such a bummer when people don't take the action now, but um, we'll just keep being that stand. I had a thought like, um, and I'm thinking of a previous client who did my last NLP training and the NLP tool that I think she valued the most was the buying strategies and understanding what her buying strategy was. Right. So for people who have no idea, you know, about neuro linguistic programming type of tools, there's just we have these um, different ways of viewing the world and accessing, you know, our senses. Thomas could probably say it better, but just knowing like what in what order do you buy things like and it's like every single time you buy, you do the same process every time. So this girl just recognized that like every single time and she had like a money thing where she was kind of like 
like spent a bunch of money or whatever. And then she just saw it so clearly. And you could see her brain just like melting away of being like, I always go into a store that has a beautiful display. I always like it when they have multiple pieces of jewelry out. And I always end up buying multiple at the same time. Like she was just like, and this is why my closet is overflowing (laughs) and just how you could change it at any time. And just like, anyway, but I remember it jogged my memory of when we were together last summer, like you're so NLP. Like we went to the grocery store together and Thomas is telling me what my buying strategy is. Like, he's just like, all right, so you're kinesthetic and then you're visual. And I'm like, well, this guy's just studying me. (laughs) Like, I didn't even remember what mine was, but I was like, all right, yep, that's probably accurate. So, but just gets you into the bizarreness of like, nothing is by chance, nothing's made up, you know, like everybody's brain is wired this certain way. And, you know, when you choose to look at it yourself, then you can change it. You know, if you're working with a hypnotherapist or an NLP practitioner, you could change it and then get a different result for the rest of your life without willpower, which I think is a key thing. You know, everyone's so stuck on like, oh, I just don't have the willpower. It's like, no, your brain's just wired a certain way that you don't like. (laughs) And that's okay. We just need to rewire it in favor of what you want. And we can do that anytime easier than you think. Yeah. And, And one of the most common things that shows up for people is that they've tried willpower over and over and over again. And after enough perceived failures, you give up. You just like, you become so resigned. And it's because you're trying to go up against something, this force of nature that's inside of you that you don't understand. And it's, I, I hate to say it, it's, it's nearly impossible. Very few people can use willpower to battle what's going on in their unconscious mind because you don't know what's, what's going on under, back there. It's like everything that's ever happened to you in your past um, drives it, right? And we repress our memories because, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be able to handle remembering everything. So like all these things that we don't remember when we're young kids is what's driving your behavior. And you're trying to use willpower to go up against it. And it's like an impossible challenge. Um, And, you know, like I like to to tell people is like, um, like imagine working on your car without a user manual or anyone teaching you how to work on the car. Like, like say you have a problem, like you need to work on the engine. All right, go ahead. Here's some tools, go fix it. How successful are you going to be at that, you know, or get some furniture from Ikea or some furniture shop and we'll take the instructions away. Go ahead, put it together. I know like some people can, there's some savants out there, some people that have the ability to just see how things connect, but a majority of people can't. Our bodies, who we are as human beings operate in the same way. There's certain things, certain tools, certain mechanics that drive our behavior. And we go around and we have no idea that we can change these things. So we're pretty much like chickens with our heads cut off, just going in whatever direction, um, not knowing. And it's all based on survival, right? So that's like the number one function of our, our unconscious mind is to keep us alive. And it does a good job of that. But what's our quality of life? Are we happy? Do we feel good? No, we're like, we're struggling, right? And most people are in that place. And NLP especially is the most powerful set of tools that teaches you how, what operates your avatar, your body, your machinery, right? And if you want to get from point A to point B, if you tried willpower and you haven't gotten there, well, NLP is the access. NLP are the set of tools that will bring you to point B. And they're the most powerful set of tools out there that I've ever come across. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Yep. And the the worst part I would say when people are struggling or suffering or really stuck is that what I notice is it, the brain starts with these messages of what's wrong with me. I can't do it. I always fail at this. Like that inner self-critic, right? Really comes out. And then you're, you just start this like abusive relationship with yourself versus it's like, Oh honey, you know, like you just don't have the manual. You know, like there's nothing wrong with you at all. You know, like you just, you know, some people come into the world and they have like business, you know, oriented families or parents. So they just know how to communicate in this way that works really well. Cause that's right. Your unconscious mind was primed that way from an early age, or 
some people and some people have zero business experience and then of course they struggle but it's like you know so it's like you're really great at these things because of these things and you're not because of these but it doesn't mean you can't learn it and i think you know that's just such a powerful shift that we've made you know and are still making in society is like people used to just have that fixed mindset of like can't do it won't ever do it you know and 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 that's it but yeah to anyone who's listening it's like any literally anything is possible and if you are getting stuck it's nothing wrong with you just get the manual <laughs> just say you're going to do it and then get help with it from someone who knows how to give you access so thank you for that Awesome. I would also want to share because I don't I, I feel like this would probably, I don't know, be somewhere you mentioned about like this mystic academy or something like that, mystic like place when you went to my experience with. So um first I got certified as a coach and then I was utilizing the coaching to figure out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because I knew nursing wasn't the last stop for me. And I was working with a coach trying to get some career clarity. And she was like, well, is there anything major that you've ever overcome in your life? And I was like, well, I got over this crazy obsession with food, body and weight using hypnosis. And she was stunned. This girl, this woman lived in Poland. She was a professor in the US and then Poland. I don't know. She was like back and forth. I don't I think. Oh, I think her name was Ola. Wow. Haven't thought of her in a very long time. Um, and she was like, well, that sounds amazing. She's like, now immediately I want to work with you <laughs> because you just said that. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I had to put in a certain amount of hours to become a coach, right? 60 hours. I had to coach somebody else. So I just put up on the thing like hypnosis for weight loss coaching. You know, this is back in 2013 on the like community forum for coaching practice hours with the International Coach Academy. And all these people, you know, whatever. And then you pick a few and then you create a coaching relationship and coach them. So I was coaching them using the coaching framework about what I had done with hypnosis and like different things that I had learned just from like the aftermath. And then finally, this one coaching client said like, Leslie, I don't want you to teach me about hypnosis. I just want you to do the hypnosis to me. And at that point, like, you know, you're like this new, you're like, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Like we're over the phone. Like, I don't know. It was like, all right, we're practicing, you know? So I was like, well, let me just try, you know, what I did for myself with you right now. And she comes back the next week for our next session. She's like, whatever you did last week, do it again. I've never felt more free around food in my entire life. And I was like, what? Like this actually works. So I immediately go to Google and I'm just like hypnotherapists that work over the phone. And there's this whole thing saying how effective it is and how people do it all the time. I was like, oh my God, no way. So then I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to make this business, I'll be the coach and then I'm going to go and have someone be the hypnotherapist and then we'll work hand in hand. So then I Google hypnotherapist, Albany, New York, and literally same street I was living on pops up this person's name who, you know, whatever with hypnosis. So I contact this person, we get on the phone and I was told him my idea. And he was like, well, I'm, I don't do that. He was like, but I do certify people in neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis, timeline therapy, and, um, yeah. NLP coaching. I don't even know that exists at the time. Probably this was three. And so I go to this guy's house <laughs> and talk about a mystical experience. Like it's just the energy being around these practitioners, which you and I are that now, but it's like, because we've, you know, been in this world, you know, for enough amount of time with these people who are living in this other realm of awareness <laughs> And it was just like, he sits me down and he just starts doing these tools with me. And we did parts integration. And I just remember like my brain, like melting <laughs> away and just being like, you know, and this guy was growing like, um, all these gardens in his backyard and he played all this music and he made all his NLP tools uh, he called it the modern day Jedi. I think you remember I had some of that worksheet from last summer. And he's just like playing his guitar, teaching me NLP, like this like VIP experience. And I worked with him, apprentice with him for two years um, with him as he was working with clients, doing hypnosis, and then myself learning the tools and practicing it on myself, all leading me to leave my job. And he helped me start my first website, you know, to being able to actually, you know, go full time doing this business. So I'm curious for you, because I feel like there is this energy 
around when you do go to an NLP training, like it's a time that you never forget. Like, it's just like this most extraordinary experience. Do you have an experience like that? Well, yeah, I mean, I can tell you that I was one of the worst students in school. Um, I just got so bored. I, I would sit there and I would doodle and I would pass notes. And, you know, I still, you know, naturally write. So I, you know, I did extremely well in school, but I, I hated the experience. And I never... I never wanted to be there. And I can tell you at the hypnotherapy Academy at my NLP trainings, like I was at the edge of my seat and I was just like, give me more. It was like, like something in my brain just opened up and I was just like taking it all in. And I was just so present. Um, and it was just because the content was so rich and it was like nothing you've ever heard before. And you knew, you knew that you could apply it to your life, right? Like, what am I going to do with the information that I learned in seventh or eighth grade on the revolutionary war today? Well, I can play the millionaire game, you know, app on my phone and I might get a question there and I get it right. Other than that, I do not use that information at all. These tools that I've learned are so valuable and, and amazing and, and getting better awareness of yourself and how you operate and, what makes you, you and being able to change those things. I mean, it's amazing. It's, I think everybody would feel the same way getting this information, you know? And I think a lot of your clients do like when they do your program and they're just like, Oh my God, like, this is amazing. This is incredible. I never knew that I could access my unconscious mind in this way and learn about myself and what drives me and make changes in a very fast and rapid way. And, um, yeah, I think it's, it's quite remarkable and extraordinary. Yeah, I totally agree. Yep. And it's just like, just the deepening, like, you know, the, when people come into the program, it's like, just help me get free from food. I don't care you know how it happens. Just give me this result. Right. And then it's like, okay, we've, we've got that. But then there's this like, hunger for certain people where it's like, I, I want to understand even more about myself and my mind. Right. Like, and I want to understand like how Leslie, you've been able to, you know, learn these things or how you're able to be even the leader that you are today and like be with all these different kinds of people and communicate this well. And, you know, like there's a certain attraction of course, to the leader as well. I think in a lot, it always was for me. Um, and I think it's just like, it's to me, you know, when I really just go back to it, it's just like, it's the same thing. Like the farther you are away from it, it's like, you kind of, it just incorporates into who you are. But what I love about having a conversation like this, we're doing the NLP training. Is it like brings it back of being like, Oh, that's right. <laughs> There's 10 billion bits of information coming in towards my sensory experience. And we only take in 6,000, right. Of those 10 billion, I think I have the numbers, right. I don't know if that's right, but it's something like that. Do you have the numbers? Is it? I mean, the, the millions of bits is varies depending on the, the resource, but yeah, 10 million is a good number, even 1 million. Right. So we're taking all this information in our experience every single second, 10 million bits. If you know anything about computers, that's a lot of information, right? That's how powerful your unconscious minds are, just starters. Uh, but the, the number that I know is a little bit lower of what we can actually process. It's like 128 bits of information, which is not a lot, very, very tiny. Um, and um, yeah, if, if we took in any more, we probably wouldn't be able to function. So it's a... Uh, uh, a uh, huge disparity of what's going into our unconscious mind versus what we can consciously perceive at any given moment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. those 128 that we're taking in is based on how you grew up in your life experiences. So the 128 that I take in from the same conversation that Thomas and I both engage in is different than the 128 he takes in because of his life experiences. So when we're talking about creating different results, it's like how to take away some of those 128 that you, that are yours that prevents you from being able to take in the sum that Thomas gets that allows him to produce results that I can't. Right. And it's just like, because, right. And it's just like, but it's just, I don't know, just thinking about catching those other bits, you know, that it's just like, Oh, wow. I never even thought about that. Ugh. 
just freaking fascinating to me. So thanks for sharing mind guy with me and the, the geekiness of <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Awesome. Cool. And so I'm, I guess what, I think I already know the answer to this, but for the people who are watching, like what was just to give people a taste maybe of like a tool, like what's the tool that has made the biggest impact on you in NLP or what was your first experience using it? Um, by far, I think one of the most powerful tools out there is parts integration. And um, when I went did the trainer's training, we get to pick a couple things and parts integration was one of the things I focused on. I think it was, you did too, as well, right? You did parts integration. Um, you know, to, to understand a little bit more about the voices in your head. And I say voices because it, the voice all sounds the same. But if you really think about it, my favorite metaphor is, is, you know, how we operate is that our conscious mind is like the captain of a ship, right? That gives the orders. And then our unconscious mind is the crew. And if a crew means there's many, many different members, right? And they all have different roles or tasks. And if you don't have all the crew working in alignment with the captain, you're never going to get where you want to go, right? And some of those crew members are like, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm lazy. Some are rebellious. Some are like, you know, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not worthy enough to be even on the ship. You know, how did I get up, get here? You know, but they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing because they're in this, you know, self pity or victim or, you know, some limiting belief is dry, running the show for them. And to really grasp parts integration, you have to understand that there's parts that sever from the whole and they operate and they go rogue and they show up in certain situations to try to protect you. And they have their own behaviors, they have their own belief systems. And unfortunately they sabotage you and they create an internal conflict, right? So anytime you're like, oh, I wanna do this. Um, but then there's another voice in your head that says like, no, you can't do that. We're not gonna do that, no way. You can't, you can't do it. Anytime you have an internal conflict like that, it's an indication of parts. And the amount of peace of mind and clarity and congruency and being able to move forward in my life without having these conflicting thoughts pop in my head, a very simple process of parts integration that takes 15 minutes, sometimes 30, depending on the person. It's this experience of like, oh, like just mm -hmm. coming together and having your crew come together and be aligned and following the captain's orders was so amazing because I've had a lot of parts conflicts and inside this head for a very long time, it was chaos. It was a mess. And it was just like this voice and that voice and did it. And it, I just couldn't get anything done. And I felt really bad about myself and was really hard on myself and had a few monsters living up there as crew members. And, um, there's nothing more valuable than the level of peace and calmness I have now than compared to the past. And to think about how chaotic so, like we as human beings can get, depending on what you've experienced in your past and your childhood and, and the repetitive patterns of continuing that, those processes, it can get pretty murky it can get pretty ugly. It can, it, human beings can experience a lot of suffering. And that's why I love doing consultations for your people, because a lot of the people I talk to are experiencing that. And I know your program can get them to the other side and give them a set of tools for the rest of them, their lives. Um, and that's what it is to be a human being is to help each other along your path. And It'd be a disservice if I didn't share with people these tools because I've been there. I was there and now I'm here and I'm going to continue going to those higher states and those um, improving my life and, and growing. So that's my story. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. And it's like having that one thing of being like, part of me feels like I'm good enough. And another part of me feels like I'm not good enough. You know, it's just like, well, what is that part that feels like you're not good enough? Like, does it look like someone, you know, does it sound like someone, you know, 
right? And just looking at it, it's just like, oh, it's actually my mom, right? And that's how parts work. I just, the last NLP training that I did, um, his name is Rusty. We're going to be interviewing him on the podcast as well, who you know as well, Thomas. He's awesome. He's like, he was like born to be an NLP trainer. I don't even understand it. Like it was unreal. But anyway, his came up and it was like, it was his brother and he's, um, you know, a salesperson. And so he was having trouble with his enrollment rates and he kept, you know, same thing, like all these voices in his head and like being hard on himself all the time. But he identified for the first time, like, that's not even me. Like that is my brother's voice. Like the same way he used to like beat me up as a kid and kind of verbally torment me. I'm doing that to myself, but it's not even me. Right. And it's like, oh, then part of me thinks that I am good enough. Right. And then it's a realizing though, that like the same reason my brother was tormenting me or I'm tormenting myself, right. Is the same reason that, you know, I want to believe that I am good enough. It's like, they, they both want me to believe that and be happy. You know, they both want me to have everything I want to have in my life. And once it's like, and you're right, it's, it's a hypnosis, in my opinion, like in and of itself, as you're doing it, because you kind of get, you're not consciously thinking about it and your hands come together. And when you realize they both want the same thing and like you incorporate it into your body, you're right. It just, it is like this own like expansion. And Rusty had the most accelerated growth in his sales after he did NLP that I've ever seen, like something crazy. I can't even remember, like took in like maybe like $80,000 in sales in a month. We'll have to see what he says next, but just ridiculous, you know? Um, so yeah, it's just like, Oh, you know, just these cool tools to learn, but like when applied to what's actively going on in your life, which we'll always do with you as practitioners, it's like, we're talking catapult results that you never thought were possible before. So love that. One of my favorites um, that I actually didn't really do until last summer was uh, the values one um, where you can change your values levels, I guess, values levels. Um, and it was really interesting to me and it like another testament. Um, and this will be the last thing we'll do before we could go. We have to talk all day if we could. And it just started raining, which looks cool because it's still sunny out. Um, was so you you say what your values are, like in what order that they come, whether it's like family, money, health, career, like whatever, you just say them all out. And then you have the opportunity with this tool to change what order your values are in. And I remember specifically because you know, financially, like money isn't like it's my business does well, you know, we could always do better, but my heart wanted more than anything to have intention, right. To be intentional, to be a higher value than anything else. Right. And, um, I remember there was a woman that was with me and, and she was like, so the next part of this exercise, you're going to have a chance to raise up the values level. And I think money was maybe four or five or something. And intention was like maybe a 10 or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to choose intention. Like I just, it just felt right to me. And she was like, are you sure you don't want to choose money? Like if you have more money, you know, you can really right. And here's a testament to how like, you can't make anyone do what you want to do. And I was like, if you have more money, you can help more people. And then you can have more space and then you can be more intentional. So I was like, yeah, she's right. Maybe I should do money. Right. So I go up and I have the practitioner do it so that money is the number one thing for me. And it ended up where it didn't work. And as soon as it switched to intention, though, the thing that I actually cared about happening without anyone else saying anything, I was the most intentional that I had ever been, you know, in my business up to that point, right after I did that work. Um, And yeah, and I think that that's just an important thing because, you know, when it comes to these tools, like there's a lot of like, oh, brainwashing or what if someone makes you do anything you don't want to do? It's just like, you already know the answer. And it's like all these tools just give you that opportunity to say and get present to what's there and then access to making that real, you know, in your everyday life. So I don't know, that one was just profound for me. And I was so grateful to come back with such intention, you know, with the work that I was doing instead of just cranking out money for what purpose <laughs> so awesome. i mean values work is is so powerful and I, I use it with my clients primarily to see which values are coming from a place of survival versus where they want to be or where they want to go and you'd be surprised that when you have values that show up that are going away from pain versus going towards pleasure um 
that's a complete game changer when you can clear out those survival values and the emotions connected to them. And then, then all of a sudden they can focus on what they really want to create in their life, you know, as opposed to I'm staying in this job because I'm afraid that if I didn't have this job, then I'm going to end up homeless sometime, you know, in like Correct. a period of time. So like people stay in situations that are not ideal for them or not even good for them because of those survival emotions, right? And when you can clear those out, you're like, oh, screw this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something better for myself. Instantaneous. That's the best thing about it. It's instantaneous change. Yep. yep. It 100% is. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that point up because, you know, for those of people who are listening, who are already hypnosis for permanent weight loss clients, like we always talk about, you know, any decision or action made out of place of fear is not sustainable. It's not lasting. Right. And, um, the biggest thing with that is, you know, with my, you know, used to buying into the belief that I'm a food addict. And if I had sugar that actually like some horrible, bad thing was going to happen to me, right. Like it, you know, worked when I was willpowering and white knuckling myself, but it wasn't going to actually versus being like, okay, let go of the fear, right. Especially the fear of weight gain that I had, right. If you actually go towards the fear, right. Like let it go and just like feel it and whatever, and then get, it's like, then, then you're going what actually, you know, matters and what you actually want to have. So it's just like, it, it just frees you up to actually be present to, and then you can be sustainable. So it's like, do you actually want to have a chocolate chip cookie? Like if the answer is yes, right. Like let's get past the fear and let's see what other things open up as the result of you saying yes to something that is what you actually desire, you know, versus, you know, continuing to try to live in the fear path, which doesn't work. So love it. Cool. Thomas, thank you so much for being here. So how can people find you? They can find me online. Um, you can search the mind guy and I'll probably pop up. I'm in Denver, Colorado. And, um, my website is the mind and you can find or contact me there, but you'll get information, more information about what I do on the website. And I do have a podcast. I haven't done an episode in a while, but if you want to check out the mind guy podcast, um, there's some really good content on there. Um, yeah. And those are ways to, to learn, learn more about me and, and get in contact with me. Love that. Definitely. I've listened to your podcast before and it's awesome. It's really, really good <laughs> in a way that my podcast isn't when talking about NLP and the tools. It's just like you really get educated in a cool way and you're a great voice to listen to. So thank you for always putting good things out into the world. And we'll make sure that we put all of that information in our show notes. Um, and then for those of you who are watching, so I'm giving my very last NLP training, uh, just found it's going to be better to focus on hypnosis for permanent weight loss. Uh, so the very last NLP training where you'll get certified in NLP hypnosis, timeline therapy, and NLP coaching is coming up October, 2022. Um, so let us know if you're interested in that. And Thomas, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me, Leslie. Enjoy myself. <laughs> Yay. I'm so glad I enjoy myself too. Thanks for who you are. Really appreciate you, Thomas. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. You too. If you are serious about taking action on your struggle with food, body, and weight, then this is for you. Go ahead and text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483. Immediately after texting that number, you will get access to our free training that will tell you why you can't figure the food, body, and weight thing out, why you can't keep weight off even after you've been successful in the past, and how to actually overcome it, including a mini hypnosis session at the end. Don't miss out. Text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483.